Hello. Hello, Is it me? Okay. Welcome to the show. Malik Brown, ladies and gentlemen, is in Mike Brown. Malik Brown is here. Um, let me introduce you to the world. I'm sure people know that who you are and who you are about. Um, but have you ever heard the term love is love? Well, this guest is definitely the living testament to that phrase as he shows his journey with success and the love of his life, Raquel, on the reality show, Trans World ATL, a show about four groundbreaking bosses who are trans men showing their journey and breaking all societal stereotypes. He's also an astounding, captivating performer and father of the House of Santiago, who has conquered the world of pastry, ladies, gentlemen, non-binary alike. Welcome to the Pink Clubhouse, Malik Brown, also known as Malik Santiago, St. James. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Y'all can show, hear me? Malik. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, you're, you're great. All right. So we're going to just hop right, right on in. So Thank you. Malik, welcome to the show again. Uh, for those that aren't aware of who you are, okay. So, a little bit about um, like you said, um, um, I am Malik Brown, also very well known as Malik Santiago Saint James. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right. You got to give all that. <laughs> um, Period. <laughs> so, let's see. I'm a pageant boy. So we'll talk about uh, Malik Santiago Saint James. I'm a pageant boy. Um, I have over 11 titles mm. in the um, um, pageantry world. Um, you know, they say I'm an icon, I guess, you know. They call me legendary, I guess, you know, I, I take it. Okay. Um, before, before, before we go on, you're an icon. What else? Um, so isn't there like a amount of years you, have you surpassed that? Because I don't know about ballrooms. So I'm, I'm really asking. I, like, you become icon or something? Yes. Uh, well, in the pageantry world, I mean, it's after 10 years. If you've been doing it over 10 years, then you, you, you're you known as an icon in the community. If you're a winner, <laughs> I mean, you know, that gives oh, you, gotta you more win. status. You, you gotta... That gives you more status. Okay, so you, you actually have to win a title, too, also. You can't just be there for 10 years and then... <laughs> I mean... Well, let's put it like this. In the MI um, division of it, male impersonation, um, yeah, it's it's after 10 years. Now, the big boys, you know, I don't know how they categorize their stuff, but for us, you know, it's after 10 years. Right. But, you know, we're not going to take away from the people that's been running for 30 years and haven't won anything either. Well, yeah. We're gonna throw them. <laughs> Is this a I mean, it's just a little no, like dust. Like dust. That was a whole umbrella. <laughs> it was just a little. It was just a little. So yes, yeah, so I'm a pageant a boy. Um, I am a part of the I Am Human Foundation. Um, what else? Um, I am with the love of my life right now. Oh. Um, well, I'm not gonna say right now, but uh, my future wife, uh, Miss Raquel Henry. Um, that's right. That's my my big juicy baby. (laughs) Um, so Malik Brown, Malik Brown, um, so Malik Brown, yeah, Malik Brown, um, former deputy sheriff, lieutenant. Um, I was in law enforcement for 20 years, 17 years with the Cab County Sheriff's Office. I was the the executive, executive protect protector to the 49th sheriff of the cab county i'm the first in the history of the sheriff's office and the state of georgia to be a trans man holding such a prestigious position we got legendary <laughs> people <laughs> we, we, icon darling icon you know what i'm saying we just got people that yeah so um i have three degrees um I have an associate's in criminal justice, a bachelor's in criminal justice, homeland security, a master's in criminal justice, legal studies. Okay. Yeah. It's it's giving Wendy (laughs) Osaka come through. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Dr. Wendy. So, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I have a 31 year old son and a nine year old grandbaby. Now, what the hell? You were, okay. I I had to get it out the way. I knew who I was at a young age. 
but I wanted my own child. Question. You can ask me anything. Can I, is it inappropriate? How old am I now? Yeah, yeah. You? you don't have to answer. No, I, that's, I'm fine. I'm 48. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You have a 31 year old son? And we look like twins. Okay. When we're out and about, people think that's my brother. Oh, yeah. I hope you do it. Because I was still trying. Still trying. Um, okay. So, look, you are the co host of It's a Trans World podcast that streams on all platforms alongside Raquel Thomas. Tell us about the podcast and what inspired it. Uh, um, so, it's part of the brand of Trans World. Um, Trans World Atlanta, of course, is um, our TV reality docuseries. Um, that's now airing on YouTube and Amazon Prime. So it's part of that brand. Um, and Tubi. To, yes, Amazon Prime and Tubi. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's mm-hmm. a part of that brand. We want to constantly keep the conversation going. Um, so our goal is to constantly elevate our brand um, and to educate the world, um, allow us to tell our stories by okay. us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Without the middleman. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, Malik, you wear many hats and you're also a part of the world of pageantry as we just discussed. How did you get into pageants? And when did you um and when you started, did you ever think you would um, become a I got in it um under the under the leadership of my gay father the legendary Monty St. James, who has over 30-something titles. Um, I started out as a performer and turned into an entertainer because there is a difference. Um, So, and what I mean by that is (laughs) anybody can get on the stage and do a little lip sync. You know, but it's it's the art. More (laughs) than (laughs) It's... (laughs) It's the art behind it. It's the 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 little words, the the ahs and the that you catch, that you become that person on stage. Right. You know, so um right. I believe I've mastered that. Um I will say from watching your videos, you do captivate do my- the audience. <laughs> I will say that. Which um I've seen yeah. a few lip things and a lot of people don't. Um, Thank you. Everyone's Thank you. very good at that. Hey, but okay. I love You're it. welcome. No. So, so, okay, just to get off, not off topic, but on topic, off script for a second. Um, now, you say, what do you think about some of and even non-lip syncers, what do you think about today's performers? You know, as Aretha Franklin would say, nice gowns for a lot of people. What, why do you think there's a like you know about performers from the past uh-huh. and seeing a lot of people today who can't perform uh-huh. why do you think that is um well some of them in our community a lot of entertainers come from houses mm. you know um, um and so they're groomed and you can see the difference on stage versus somebody like oh man i want to do this i want to try that and they do just that they try that Right. That's not their right. thing. Right. But if they, you know, get with someone that they could, that's some, someone that helps groom them, then they get better. Mm-hmm. But some people, they just do it for fun and they don't put into it. They don't put into the clothes. They don't get into character. So it, it makes it um, different. It puts them on different levels. Just like, you know, um, the drag girls, they put money into their costumes. You know, yeah. um, um, right. the boys, they do as well, but they don't have to do as much as the drag girls because they love the, the beautiful gowns and the this and the that. And, you know, so it, it makes a difference be, uh, between them and somebody just getting on stage with a nice little yeah. dress. Right. So, okay. so, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, nice little dress got me weak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so no, no questions off limits. Right. <laughs> oh, we have some questions this way. Okay. Um, I mean, so you're a part of a reality show called Trans World ACL. Mm-hmm. It's a show about four trans men 
navigating through adversity, success, love, and life. How did this opportunity come about, and what was it about the show that made you want to join? Um, so this show was birthed um, from a dream from my friend, um, who is the executive producer, Raquel M. R. Thomas. She dreamed this show. And she woke up and she started taking notes. And later that morning, she, um, I believe she texted me and said, hey, when you get a minute, I want to talk to you about something. And I called her and she told me about her dream. We set a date. She came here. We met at a local um, restaurant. And we literally wrote the show out, the details and stuff, how we wanted to bring it to life on napkins and scratch paper. <laughs> Come on, Alkin. And there it was. And it was birth. She she allowed me to pretty much cast everybody. I mean, I, I casted everybody. Um You know we there. I'm sorry. You know a lot of trans men in the area. Yeah. How how did that go? Yes, I do. Um the the people that's on the show, we've been friends for well over twenty years mm. because Alfonso and Jamel, we've been friends maybe five or six years. Okay. But I I still knew that their story was unique. So right. And that that's what makes a good show when you think about it. Like when people are actually friends. When they're not friends, I feel like a lot of people um, you know, kind of force drama and force kind of thing. Um, and shout out to KB Too Funny, who's also, she's a drag king. Um, do you know her? Um, no. Okay. And that's okay. my son behind me, by the way. Oh, okay. On that yeah, you got, we got to get you in, you know, she's a really great performer also, by the way. Um, okay. She's a drag king that does it out in ATL. Um, so I, I like the fact that you guys are actually friends. Yeah. That's the beautiful thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think what I love about the show is um, it shows how you can just simply love differently. It doesn't have to be what society says. It has to be um, and, and, and that you guys are just That's like right. bold about showing it. That's what I love about it. Like, this is who I love and this is who I'm being and this is my life. Um, you take it or leave it, and this is my journey. So I, I think the show is really, really beautiful and definitely. Yeah, and, and we didn't um, ask for space; we created it because my executive producer right. she pays sixty thousand dollars out of her own pocket to birth this show, to produce this show. Well, yeah, she, um, and she's a lesbian, awesome. so she didn't have to do it. But because she believed that this story needed to be t told, she invested. What? By herself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 because we got some ideas. Yes. Uh, no, but that's awesome. But, um, Malik, on the show, you and your beautiful wife, Raquel, uh, well, future wife, uh, discuss uh, in show how both of you are navigating through a new kind of love with you both being trans. How did you and Raquel meet, and was there any reluctancy from you? Well, let her tell the story. <laughs> Nah, she said I slid in her DMs. <laughs> but I did, but did she I was really inquiring about church. Like, for real, for real. I'm a church boy by heart. Like, uh, like for real. I love to take my shirt off, because that's just my thing. But I'm a church boy. And uh, so what, I was inquiring, inquiring about, about her church, Reholden. Um, so... So, like we literally right. talked about church okay. and me coming to church and she she got me to come to church. It's okay, Malik. We know <laughs> no. you got game and then like you got No, 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 no. You knew no, she I wanted a holy God the time, but we were in the process of separating. Okay. We were not, you know, we were already on separate roads. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was in a space where I needed okay. to be in church. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to show her your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let's, he said, let's discuss over some communion crackers and wine. And listen. Oh, Lord. Uh, so, listen, this year has brought on lots of conversation between cisgendered women and trans women, and the cis woman not wanting to be called fish or cis. Right. Making comments about how they feel like trans women want to be them. 
What are your thoughts on this topic? And do you feel like it's easier being a trans man with a trans woman? I don't know if you've heard the news, but Marlon Wayne said his son um, is transgender. Um, yeah, that just came out today. And now identifies as a male with a different name. So do you feel like um, it's easier being trans men? And um, what do you think about the whole cis and fish and bile this and that? Um, yes, I do feel like it's easier for trans men um, because a lot of trans women just don't have the privilege of passing. Um, so like my other half, she don't have to put on makeup. She's just beautiful, you know? And then there are some where even if they put on makeup, you know, they just not passable. Right. And then putting on, well, no, I don't want to say, I, I'm not being offensive or trying to be, but putting on like a beard or something like that is probably easier, right? Well, when you say put putting on a beard, well, like there's 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 men who put on beards, so it's not like you know what I mean. Like there's men who yeah, that's have... easier for a man, but yeah. but yeah, trans women uh, they have it harder than trans men, right? All around the board, um, safety, looking, just everything. You can be a soft looking man and still be considered, you know, like a trans man, or you know, or just are you just a soft man, right? Yeah. Right. I think Lord Jagger is trying to tell oh, us no. that his beard is real crow. Oh, um, no. And, and it's just on. <laughs> 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 nah, my, my little beard is all No, he was saying me. He was saying oh, me. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, I was but, talking about Lord Jagger. But the Lord main Jagger, thing, the cis and the fish, and I don't, I don't really care for it. Um, I don't use them. Um, but I don't care for it, but that's just this thing. People got a right to feel how they feel. If they don't like it, they don't like it. You know, I just, I believe in treating people how you want to be treated, period. You know, but um, I don't like calling a, a trans woman fish. Oh, you you fish or this or that. Like, no, you're a woman. Right. You know, so I, I don't like the little names and stuff. Ooh. Why do you think it's so difficult, and just from your perspective, um, for human beings to kind of like understand that some people were born um, in a way of they, you know, they feel like a man or feel like a woman, even though they were born, and, you know, whatever. I think um, it just could be upbringing. You know, it's almost like when people, how they, how they um, was raised in the church. Mm -hmm. It's just their way of belief, their way of how they, they were brought up. Um, some people you just can't change that, mm -hmm. no matter what. While it shouldn't be their business, Malik. they just, some people just don't want to accept it. Now, it doesn't prevent, prevent them from paying their bills, so I don't know why, you know, they get so mm -hmm. <laughs> upset about it, but they do. Malik, what, what was that journey like for you in deciding, okay, I was born this particular kind, I was born this way, but this is who I am and this is who I'm going to be. What was that, shit um, so what was that journey like for you? I can remember back when I was a baby, all I played with was trucks. And uh, I can remember at my grandmother's house, I had a brick and I would tear my grandmother my grandmother lived down in the country down in savannah so i would tear her yard up making roads for my little car and stuff, <laughs> you know <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, uh my mom said at two or three years old i climbed the ladder and went up on the roof like mm -hmm. um i don't know like my my dad he brought me go-karts that's what i wanted a go-kart i had a four-wheeler i had a dirt bike like yeah yeah, I was wrong. Really, you was wrong. Yeah, was you wrong. were. You really <laughs> were. Okay. <laughs> yeah, much. I was wrong. Um, so, um, I I went through life as a tomboy, to be honest. Um, and then I started liking girls, like you know, looking at girls, like okay, like she she cute, she fine, like okay, and you know, I would look mm -hmm. at boys, but I would look at boys to see how I would want to be how I want to dress, 
you know. Um, and so I pretty much from a baby that I'm full circle now mm-hmm. to who I am. Um, but, but before I transitioned, mm-hmm. it was like, I got to the point to where I started feeling different inside. Cause I had other brothers that done, that had done transition way before me, people that I could talk to, but it wasn't about a trend or jumping on the bandwagon. It was when I got to the point to where if somebody misgendered me, because as a stud, you still, you know, call bro, hey, bro, what's up? Or that's my brother, or, you know, so that was cool. But then, you know, like one day I was at a restaurant and the lady, she asked um, the person I was with, you know, what would you have? And then she looked at me and I'm the I'm the tomboy looking like I look basically without a beard mm-hmm. and she's like well miss what would you have but of course my voice mm-hmm. was way lighter and it was almost like fingernails on the top board mm-hmm. and i really want to say do i mm-hmm. can i curse mm-hmm. it was really like i want to say yeah. i fucking look like a miss to you and so from that day on i knew something was changing w- within me because i was bothered by that and i had not been bothered before mm-hmm. and so i started doing research and talking to my brothers and and i decided like yeah this this is what i want to do you know it's interesting like that you say that um about sorry um you say that about the 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 what how was it the progression um how you used to play with trucks and this and that before you liked women Uh like a lot of people would seemingly think, you know, oh, you just, you know, I think that a lot of people have to talk about that kind of conversation because, and we've talked about it on the show here, about what we felt like before, you know, just whatever, like what we felt as kids, what we thought, I mean, like it's different. So I think that's a um, a good thing that you're saying, analogy. Yeah, because I didn't want to wear dresses <laughs> and... There's a there's one picture of me when I was a kid. Um, they put me on a sailor dress, oh. and uh, they said I had on my little flip flops, and they told me to put my little dress shoes that they bought me. When we got to the place to take pictures with Santa Claus, I pulled out my cowboy boots, <laughs> but they didn't know because they was in my bag, and I was a little like little kid. Right. And so I'm sitting on Santa Claus yeah. lap with a sailor dress on with cowboy boots on. Wow. <laughs> right. Cowboy Taylor. We love that. <laughs> <laughs> um so Malik, you uh you and Raquel are heavily involved in the church and a lot of times society would tell you that spirituality and LG in the LGBTQ mm-hmm. community don't mix. How did you connect and find spirituality on your own terms? And what would you say to someone who is dealing with either their gender or sexuality? Well, for me, me, I know whose I am. (laughs) And God has been so good to me. Like, I've been so blessed, you know. Mm -hmm. And I I always think about if it had not been for God who's on my side, where would I be? You know, so I I hold that Mm -hmm. for me. I can't speak for anybody else, but I know the things and I've seen the things that God has done for me. Um, so I, I believe wholeheartedly that God loves us all, no matter who we are and how we are. And I feel like if people would move away from um, what people have maybe um, put in their heads or, or their upbringing from you're going to hell and this and that, like, no, you got to know God for yourself. And I believe that if people um, form a personal relationship with God or even look back on how they've been blessed, even with being who they are, then they, they, they should know whoever they pray to that that person is real. He or she is real. They are real. So I just feel like if people hold on to that, you know, you just got to look back on where you've been and where you are now and you know you're not homeless and maybe you should have been you should have been killed in that accident but by the grace of god like you're still here you're gay but you're still here you're trans but you're still here 
You're straight, but you're still here. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. There you go. Um, Now, we've uh, seen video clips and pictures of you, and we were just a little curious and intrigued as the how you get such an enticing, elongated print as the Transformer. Elongate. Enticing. Elongated. I mean, but it has been captivated by your print. I just want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, I didn't come up with this question. So, I mean, it's to... who I am. I gotta give me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a leak Santiago Saint James. Oh. You know, so it's a lot okay. come with that name. <laughs> Okay, and, and and so so is is Raquel pleased with the Captain Baby elongating and the name? Of Jesus. <laughs> she said, "Thank you, Jesus." <laughs> Very pleased. <laughs> uh, that is. She <laughs> love that star na na. I'm dead. Is that what you? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, no, well, I'm just saying. Uh huh. Oh, it makes her say "sha na na." Oh, Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So, Malik, um, you have accomplished a lot and definitely still have more to do. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Uh, what's next? What's for next for me? Um, so currently, um. As far as um, career wise, currently I um, am. I really got two jobs, but one. But I work at home. But I'm at one hundred twenty thousand a year. So, you know, thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm an operations manager for one of them. I'm the only operations manager for their organizations in Georgia. Um, the other one is based here in Atlanta, and I'm the lead operations manager. Um, so where do I see myself? Um, it depends on where things go with our show because we're in the process of branding it. Um, season two, we should start filming for season two um, at the beginning of next year. Um, after that, We've already set to brand. It's already branded for Trans World LA, Trans World New York, Trans World Vegas. So it's like literally going to be a brand. Uh, of course, right now, now we okay. are in the process of um, obtaining sponsors because, as I said, um, executive producer Raquel pays 60000 out of her pocket to put it on. So we have um, Gilead that's backing us. Um, because we really want to continue to educate and talk about you. If you're standing by me and I sneeze, you're not going to catch HIV. Because, of course, you know, we have two um, cast members that's living with HIV. Um, that's undetectable. And so we want to continuously spread the word that, you know, you can live a happy, healthy life, you know, with HIV or whatever. And you know, the new medicines that they have and everything that, you know, can help you live a long and healthy life. Um, so I just want to continue to spread the word um, on and off the show, um, however that looks. Um, I, I don't mind continue, continuing to work, but I do want to continue to push the brand. And so wherever that takes me, you know, that's where I'll go. How do you deal with hitting on you? How do I deal with what? Men hitting on you. Like, if a, a guy sees you as a guy and is like, well, you are a guy, but you know what I mean, um, and is, like, attracted to you, is that, like, a like a turn-on for you? Like, Yeah, it does. It, it's a turn-on. Um, I get dick pics all the time. I get... I am, am, are you attracted to me? I, I, let me say this. I am. I am attracted to men, but I wholeheartedly love Raquel. Of course, of course. Like, 
Like, okay. and I'm not just okay. saying that because she's on here. I'm just in a different mind space, a different place in my life um, mm -hmm. where she's all I want. Like, she she truly makes me happy. Right. She treats me like a king. And, and again, like, that's on God. Like, I'm not just saying that because I have so many men and women, cis, lesbians, whatever, trans women hit on me. I've had, and I'm using that word, but I'm using it for the show, but I've had cis, straight women to say, well, dang, why why didn't you give me a chance, fans? Why, you know... But it's it's not about that. I, I truly believe that you can't help who you love. I didn't set up looking for love right. for a trans woman. I, I never thought I would be with a trans woman in my life. I had no attraction to trans women. Right. But it wasn't about that. It was about how she did, has, and is making me feel. Right. Right. How is she making you feel? Okay. Listen, so Malik, um, I want to thank you so much. I mean, we, we're having such a great conversation, and I'm hoping actually you could stick around for our, our advice column section. Um, but could you tell us, uh, could you tell the people out there um, how people can reach you and how they can stay updated with all you have going on? Okay. Um... You can follow me on Facebook, and that's Malik Santiago St. James. Or you can follow me on Instagram at one gorgeous underscore church boy, and that's the number one gorgeous underscore church boy. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Malik. Um, could, could you stick around with us for yeah. a, a from our audience? Yeah, um, I'm we're going to have our friend Juno come up. Uh, I think he's in the chat too. Okay. Oh, uh, Juno, Juno, the friend of the show. All right. All right. Uh, one second. Bring it. And y'all, please watch Trans World Atlanta. Yeah. It's out now. It is streaming uh, on YouTube, Tubi, and um, it's on Amazon. Tubi and Amazon Prime. Yes. Amazon. Oh, I'm sorry. And like the second or third day that it it went live, mm. it crashed. They had to give us more bandwidth. Oh. 